Fiona and I are going to talk a little bit about work that we are doing with a cohort of 25 B.Ed. students who are taking a major specialism in special and inclusive education. So I suppose just a few, uh, a bit of background, and then we're really going to focus on, on this, this graphic here, which is illustrating what we did. Um, we're, we're going to be talking about formal evaluation for, of our assessment practice from the student's perspective and also our reflections um, on our experience. I suppose a few principles that are underpinning what we've been doing. Um, again, we're aware of threshold concepts um, in relation to planning, in relation to assessment and collaboration. I suppose a core principle that we are very much driven by the fact that our assessment has got to be linked to and assess our learning outcomes. And the learning outcomes for the modules that we're talking about are, are on one of the posters there. We're going to give you some time to get up and have a look at those in a few minutes. Um, that we wanted, again, I suppose, reflecting our background and our interest in special and inclusive education, that we wanted to create opportunities for all the learners in that group of 25 to demonstrate their learning. And I think it would be fair to say that that has illustrated and is continuing to, 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 to give, us, um, give us interesting information and, and, and findings that are challenging, that's challenging our teaching all the time. Um, again, back to the fact that we are talking about a Bachelor of Education degree, we are talking about student teachers. So critically important for all learners, but critically important for our learners to be able to self-assess their own learning and plan uh, begin to conceive, consider themselves as lifelong learners and that's going to be something that we'll come back to in, in detail. And then again, returning to, to some of the principles we spoke about earlier, that we believe that assessment is integral to teaching and learning and so part of our role as teachers, teacher educators is to model good assessment practice in our work. So that's really where we came from. The context four-year B.Ed. programme as Anne-Marie said this morning, the nature and amount of input regarding special and inclusive education, SIE, has increased exponentially. So uh, we are talking about now in the B.Ed. programme as a whole, eight modules over four years. Two of those are the core modules, the first in first year that Anne-Marie and I spoke about earlier, and then this cohort of 25 students doing six specialist modules across B.Ed. 2, 3 and 4. And concurrently with this, our research focus for Fiona and I is self-study documenting our experience of planning, teaching and assessing these modules, the modules that are in third year and the modules that are in fourth year. So this is the first rollout of these just finished in the first semester of this year. I'm just going to, this, you, I know you can't read this, but I'm going to give you some time and Fiona's going to be talking you through that it's on the poster there. This is the, the model of the assessment that we used. We were also, and I should have mentioned this at the principles at the beginning, we were keen to make connections with the, between the assessments, to build on the assessments, because remember, prior to the new B.Ed. programme, we had one module in third year. So we were seeing these students for one semester. This was a wonderful opportunity for us to revisit ideas right across the programme, right from first year, right through to, to fourth year with this cohort of 25 students. So I suppose that kind of underpinned a lot of our thinking about how can we plan our assessment and then how can we build on that assessment to deepen and to extend our learning, okay? And I'm going to hand over to Fiona at this point. Okay, thanks, Anna. Do you want to take that? Yeah. Thank you. So what we're going to do is try and tease apart what's on the poster here and just kind of give you a sense of what we actually did. And then we're going to give you time to get up and look at the learning outcomes. Um, and we also have um, students' reflections on the assessment um, and some of their comments on that. So when we started in third year, as Anna said, we very much looked at the learning outcomes and then we um, said, well, how are we going to assess this? The first module in third year was on collaborative practice. The students were out on a 10-week um, placement from September to Christmas and then they were coming into us in January. So what I wanted to do um, was explore their prior knowledge already about collaboration. So I kind of thought because it's one of these big 
lofty notions like, OK, we're going to have a module on collaboration. What's that, what's that going to look like? Um, so we set up a private blog, and this is the front page of the private blog. You can see across the top here, we kind of gave them information about it. Um, we have tabs around school placement preparation. In block A, there was um, four weeks of school placement, block B, block C. And if you go into one of those, we might just get any of them at all now. Um, so say in block C placement, the focus was on curriculum and pedagogy. So they were given a quote. It said, pedagogy is not simply a synonym for teaching strategies. Pedagogy demands we attend to the complex relationship between teaching and learning. They were asked to reflect on this comment in light of their current placement in situ. Okay, so this was the first cohort that ever did it. All right, so when it was set up initially, the first year there was quite a lot of monitoring on it because we had to do all the monitoring ourselves. So we had 25, they were making a posting and a comment every week. Um, so there was quite a bit of um, work on it initially, but I'll show you how we lessened that work um, in a few minutes. So the idea was that they engaged with this. What it did for us was we knew their baseline then. Okay, so we knew where we were starting at. Okay, we had given them in the first few weeks, the focus was all around collaboration. Um, the other thing it did, which was really interesting, the students very much said it to us, and the current third years that have just started with us now have said the same thing, that actually they would never have looked at collaboration. They would never have looked for it. But because they had to make a posting, they were actually looking for it in that context. So they were looking for collaborations between themselves and the cooperating teacher, or between learning support teachers and class teachers, between students and teachers. So depending on the focus, they were then able to look for it in that context. So apart from it answering our need for prior learning, it really gave us, um, it really helped them in order to focus on it. Then what we did was we built on that particular assessment and the next thing they had to do, next assessment they had to do was to reflect on that and to reflect on it as a model of professional development, okay? Because what we want them to do is to get into the habit of actually thinking about their professional development and if it makes, makes any impact on them, okay? So the interesting thing about this, and you can see that there, and I have handouts here if anybody wants to, to see those, they loved this assignment. They said that they actually wouldn't have thought too much about blog and professional development or anything, but when they had to actually tease it out under certain headings and think of the impact on their own development at lots of levels and things that they might have heard on the blog and then tried out in the class and the impact it might have had on students or on their own learning at lots of levels, that, that actually, um, that was one of the assignments that they really, really liked. Um, in the context of Building on that then, as we, spiralling is our, is our theme here. Sorry, just to feel like yep. there's just one thing that I should have said, is that that blog, that third year blog, during school placement, was a private blog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody else could see it. We just set it up on WordPress. And the students. So it was a WordPress account. You had to be invited to it to be able to see it. So it was only ourselves as monitors on it and facilitators and the students that could see it. Okay, and that was really important because for some of them, they had never blogged before. They were quite nervous. Okay. Um, so and we had in interesting discussion when they were back on campus about that and, yes. you know, what, what made it difficult and the facilitation of technology, that it was really yeah. important to have the app on your mobile phone and so on to and enable you to really use the well blog. for them because they could do it on the bus on the way into school on, or out or they could do it on the train or wherever they were because you had the WordPress app. So they found, and you could get messages in on it, and they found that that was really, really handy. Again, appealing to their age. That's what they do. So um, that really worked well for them. But in order to kind of embed that, in fourth year, our fourth year module is called Leadership for Inclusion. So in order to build on their experience of professional development and getting them out there to be leaders in the field, they were required to attend a conference. So. Um, a limited number of conferences were 
identified. So we had the Learning Support Conference, the ILSA Conference. We had FAILCHA, our Teaching Council Conference. Um, we had NCSE. NCSE. And so they signed up for which one they wanted to attend. And so we had negotiated tickets for them to these particular conferences and they went and they were blown away. They were completely blown away by how friendly people were. This is something I definitely come to as a teacher. I can't believe people talk to me. I feel like a professional. All of these things, somebody said, I was talking to a teacher, a teacher has been teaching for years and I was telling her about the project I'm thinking of doing and she gave me ideas. So they were really taken aback by this, okay? Also by the fact that they went to the ILSA conference and they were, a, a concern was, they had been concerned that, I won't understand what this is about. Yes, that's right. But that they really yeah. felt they were part of this community of learners. And uh, they, they were very much blown away by, it was a reinforcement of their, their knowledge. Absolutely. And contribution. And the interesting thing was, if you went to the ILSA conference, that was the day before they came back to college. So they gave up a day, it was a day and a half. A lot of them attended for the day and a half. Okay, so this was quite a commitment, okay? So in case, in case the ILSA conference, there it was a reciprocal agreement with us. They had free uh, admission to the conference and they helped at the reception desk and so yes. on. Which was important yes. too, because yeah. they felt part of the And part it was of really good to negotiate to get them tickets for Failture, because we were telling them, you know, these are really hard to get guys now, so you know, make the most of it uh, when you're there. And of course, naturally, they didn't believe us, you know, but a couple of people were saying to them when they were in there, how did you get tickets for this? You know, how did, so they were then really kind of, you know, this is good to be here, you know, so um, that was good for them. So in terms of building on that, not only did we want to give them exposure to that professional development experience, they then had to come back and do the same thing again. So they had to reflect on that as a model of professional development. So that was again, deepening their learning of using something like reflection. And this is where we're going with the Teaching Council, reflecting portfolios, how we reflect on our professional development, things we need to think of, okay? So that was kind of how we, how we built on that. Um, in terms of the blog also, so the private blog they did in third year, in fourth year, as I said, the module was on leading inclusion. 12 of the students of the cohort and this is where we lessened our workload, 12 of them led on the blog for the current third years. So they were now doing the monitoring. We were over monitoring, myself, Joe and Anna, because the three of us work on the fourth year module. So we were all over, over monitoring them. They also had to grade their peers on it. So there was peer assessment here. There were criteria they had to grade and again we monitored that. Okay, so again it was bringing them that step all the time. Things they had learned in third year, now embedding it and now getting them to actually give them skills to move forward with. That these are things they can have after they leave here. That it's not done when they leave here. Okay. They were so close to the experience, to where the third years who were out on school placement were, that for us, and we were kind of, you know, monitoring it at a much lighter level, oh, yeah. I would say, than in third year. But to, again, it was giving us insight, in this case, into how much, how well equipped those fourth years were to address the issues that the third years ha were identifying in their school placement. Yeah, and I suppose another important thing on that, Anna, is those that were monitoring on it, this was part of their assessment. Yeah. Okay, and the criteria for that assessment came from what they said worked well about the blog in third year. So it was taking their criteria and turning it into what we used to grade them against in fourth year. So it was their student voice and taking that forward. Okay. Um, the other thing I suppose on this is the blog, as Anna said, was private. Yeah. Again, trying to extend their learning in fourth year. We set up Twitter, learned how to use Twitter very quickly. Um, and we asked them to reflect on each session. So they had to do one tweet and reply to somebody's tweet after the lecture each week. Now, we assumed Lots of them would have been on Twitter already. We had two who were on Twitter. Yeah. Is that right, Joe? I think two who had tweeted before. 
So they had to set up Twitter accounts. Okay, we gave them the hashtag SIE401 and off they went. Now this... Except that they didn't. <laughs> snowballed. <laughs> we became superfluous to this. Yeah. Immediately, but now the first day, <laughs> We put up, we asked them to reflect on week one. Nobody went in there because we warned them it was a public arena, that they needed to be really careful about what they said. This was now going from private to public. Um, nobody tweeted. They, they, they had from the Wednesday, by the Saturday afternoon, Fiona and I happened to be at a conference and we realized that nothing had happened. So we said, we've got to do something here. So we decided we needed scaffolding. Yeah. So we tweeted. We tweeted. And after that, it just took off. Absolutely, to the fact that they're still tweeting. Okay, they loved it. And again, the criteria for the uh, Twitter was things like responding to somebody else. They also had to um, source a useful website or a useful tool or something else. And again, they were amazing at doing that. When they were at the conferences, they were tweeting from the conferences. Other students were following them on Twitter from the conferences. So it really did what it was supposed to do. And needless to say, they got much better at Twitter than we'll ever be. And they were really, really good at it. Okay. One of, the, one of the obvious things about it too was that during that fourth year, remember, they were doing their specialist module where they were required to treat, but they were also taking part in a core module which Anne-Marie was delivering. And for yes. us observing the tweets, they were making connections. They were making connections with things that were happening in other modules, in other aspects of the program, as well as in the core module. And uh, that, that was, you know, very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, that was really important. Getting on to this, and we'll make more links with Anne-Marie's fourth year core module now on this. Another assignment was an article summary. So they were assigned to mixed ability groupings. Now, why did we do that? We assigned them because collaboration, you don't always get to choose who you want to collaborate with. So again, a real life experience. We got a lot of moans and groans when we did it first, but um, it was one of the things they reflected on that was hugely positive, okay, because they said they worked with people that they wouldn't have worked with before and that it worked out really, really well, okay. Part of the assessment criteria for that was um, on the collaborative process, okay. Um, one of the, why did we want to do that? So we gave them articles obviously related to special education, related to um, curriculum and pedagogy and collaborative practice. We wanted them to do it because the research would tell us that teachers value research very lowly. That what they value is, give me strategies, give me methodologies, give me the quick fixes, okay? So again, in the spirit of preparing them for going forward, and as we've always said to them, we can talk to you about all the special educational needs that we know about right now, but we actually don't know what's coming down the road. We don't know there could be a new syndrome in a few years' time. We can never cover everything that we need, that you need to know. But we need to equip you with the skills where you can find that out. And we wanted research to be their default, okay? So that was the idea of doing that. Now, in doing this, um, with the, they were put into groups and they were asked to present it then to their own cohort so they summarised the article in their group, they presented it to their own cohort in a way that would make the content of it accessible to all the learners in the room. So they were asked really kind of not to use PowerPoint, but to be creative. So there was a huge element of creativity in how they did that. And they were amazing. From puppet shows to um, big book story time to... Songs. We had songs, we had guitars, we had everything in here. The student presentations were fabulous and they really loved that day. Building on that, so taking that, so they voted peer assessment, they voted the top two presentations. In fourth year to lead on inclusion, those two groups were asked to present to different audiences, tough audiences. The audience they had were the teaching and learning committee here in the college Okay, they also had to present to our postgraduate students, a group of 55 teachers. Okay, so they presented to them. And worst of all, and the one which they were dying about was they had to present to the 400, their peers, the ones that they knew. 
So this is what, so what they had to do then was change their presentations to suit the audiences. Pip. Fiona, have you, um, did you record that day at all? So, sorry. The student presentations. Did you record the day at all? We and have two of them recorded. What I'm thinking of is there's a whole um, academic article in the use of that creativity yes. as a way of making complex academic articles accessible. accessible. And that is what we were, that was our focus in doing that assessment. So, um, and we were very explicit to them, why did we do this? What's the learning here for you? If you have a cohort in front of you and you're trying to do the 1916 Rising and they're kind of thinking, what are we talking about the past for? That you can make it accessible for that very reason. That you can do it through story. So it actually equipped them with those skills. Interestingly, they said it was an assignment that took a lot of time, but it didn't feel like an assignment. They said it was just great fun. They really learned a lot from doing it. And um, in fourth year, when they, when they presented to their four, the 400, they got such a buzz. They used words like adrenaline. It was great. Presenting to the postgraduate teachers, they asked us questions and we were able to answer them. <laughs> you know, it was like they had, and you could see the pep in their step as from the first time they presented to by the time they had done it in, in the fourth year. It was, it was quite amazing, wasn't it, Anna? So just to clarify, oh, sorry, go on. Go on. But just from the point of view of the, of the other okay. people in Sector 5 who watched that, they did not have to write their feedback, but overall their peers loved it. They loved, they really appreciated the work and effort that was put into it, but actually it made those, because I used the journal articles that the students, that this, these groups of students had used in the third year and are now presenting on to my group in fourth year, I use them as the core reading for the 400. So it made, they weren't the only ones, but those two or three, and it made it very accessible mm -hmm. to the other 375 in their group. Um, so it really, it, 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 was, it, was, it made it a very good impact in terms of teaching and learning uh, in that big, large class setting mm -hmm. and a different approach. So of me standing up and talking about them, mm -hmm. their peers did. And building on a point that Pip asked, was we were talking this morning about being explicit about that. Be, they, because they were doing the presentation based on the same article, but they had to take it from third year and present it to these three very diverse audiences. One of the key things we teased out with them and was a criteria for their assessment was to reflect on how they needed to adapt their teaching for an auditorium with 400 students versus this room with 55 very qualified and experienced yeah, teachers. Yeah. So we were quite explicit about that. And they were very good at articulating. They actually had the language of teaching and learning. So they could actually speak in terms of pedagogy and collaboration and aspects of pedagogy and why they're doing what they're doing. It was really quite impressive to, to see their understanding and, and how that had developed. And they really were leading, which was the aim of that that fourth year module. Just in case you're a bit confused, 25 students, 12 led on the blog, six led through the presentations, and then another group led, um, again linked with the, the SIE 401, they took part in a panel in a, a organized by Anne-Marie. And a debate. And one of the things they did was they used Anne-Marie's Kahoot. Yes. Having observed Anne-Marie doing it, they decided they wanted to do a Kahoot to teach this rather complex article about controversial issues in special education to their peers. And just on the panel, we had six of your SIE students on, on, on that panel, along with, we actually had 16 people on the panel in total. The other 10 people, we had um, one of the uh, top inspectors from the Department of Education. We had somebody from the SESS, uh, uh, from Special Education Support Service. We had qualified teachers, we had a parent. Um, we had a range of, of other people, yeah. most of them professionals. And our six students presented in three pairs in that context. So even the people that were sitting beside, it was quite a daunting mm. um, prospect to present along with those in front of the 400 as well. But it was a great learning experience for and, them. And they loved it. Yeah. They were terrified at the prospect of it, but they really, really loved, uh, loved the experience. <coughs> okay, another one that they had to do was a literature review. So they, had, they were given five articles 
and they had to source five more and they had to write on inclusive pedagogy. Now again, going back to why did we do it, we wanted them to be able to research, research and when they're researching to actually be able to make sense of what they're reading and say, critique one against the other. And again, building on that, we saw um, scope for that they were going to be doing some kind of action research in fourth year. And their information back to us was that it made the action research project a lot easier because they actually knew how to engage with the literature, they knew how to write a literature review. So again, it was a skill going forward. So it was all about kind of prepping them for, for their skills. Okay, so that's kind of the spiralling aspect of it. So in terms of student design of assessment, where did that come in? We had the article presentations in third and fourth year. We talked about the criteria, but just to give you a sense of the criteria, and it's logged out, okay. I'll, I, I log in. You if talk. you log in, and, yeah. Um, so in terms of um, student voice, in terms of that, what we asked them in the beginning of it was, we suggested that we would do 100% continuous assessment. And we asked their opinion on that. We asked for a show of hands on that. Every one of them wanted 100% continuous assessment. And we said to them, but there have to be people here who actually are very good at exams and like that situation and would just prefer a straightforward exam. And they said, no, 100% continuous assessment is what we want. So we, we gave them that voice initially. Another way that they had it, Anne-Marie mentioned a minute ago, that they had to do um, a presentation on an article um, to the 400, and they also had to do the debate, the panel, okay? And they were two things combined for leading on inclusion. And they came to me one day and they said, well, what percentage goes to which? And in my head, I was kind of thinking, well, 50-50, but hadn't kind of, and I, I should have known that I didn't have it um, on loop for them. And I said, well, what do you think? And they said, oh, we've put far more work into doing the student presentation. There has to be more marks for that. And we said, well, what kind of weighting are you thinking of? They said, well, at least 70% for that and 30 for the other. This was far harder. And Anne-Marie said to them, well, if it's harder, would you not be better having like, easy, you know, less going for it in case, like, you know, you get, no, no, we've put more effort into this, this is the one we want. And it ended up at 80% for that and 20% for the panel. Okay, so it's interesting. They wanted their effort and their hard work valued in, the, in that context. Okay, thanks, um, Anna. This is going back to showing you the criteria so that you see that it's not limited. So this is the criteria for their presentations. So it was literally, did you introduce yourself if you're giving a presentation and briefly outline your individual contribution to it? Um, did you include the aim of the article and the rationale for same, the context of the article and the methodology? Um, did you present and discuss the findings? Did you consider the conclusions? Did you reflect on the model of presentation you used as a group? and its potential effectiveness in a classroom situation. Okay, um, did you answer questions from the class? And then we had one section on the collaborative process and they used Google Docs and we could explore through Google Docs what that collaborative process looked like. Um, and then kind of the overall presentation, was it clear, was it not? Again, in terms of, they were weighted in terms of marks when we asked them about that, Afterwards, they said they would prefer more marks for the kind of creative bit of how they, the model of presentation that they used and how it would apply in a classroom situation. So for this year, we have given that more marks. Okay, so we're um, taking their feedback on board, I suppose, in that context. Um, and overall, they had a lot of, they had a wiki to do that, that year as well. So there were six assessments. They felt six was too much because you, you're never gonna get 100% in six. So we cut it down to four this year, but we asked them which ones they wanted to drop. And they were very clear. They wanted conference presentations kept and the reflections on that. They wanted Twitter kept. Um, so we ended up dropping wiki. the wiki and a report on the blog or something, yeah. So again, it was student voice in terms of what we would keep and what, uh, what we wouldn't keep. Um, at the end of fourth year, um, again to get their, um, that was just the cohort that left at Christmas time, they're gone out on placement. 
So again, in terms of evaluating the modules and the assessment, um, we used a questionnaire and Anna came up with the idea that we would use focus groups as well. So they could do either or. And about 16 of them chose focus groups and a smaller number chose questionnaires. So, and as Anna said, we are using this as a research project because these were the first time the modules were rolled out. So we did it as a self-studier ourselves, starting at the beginning of when they were um, in third year. So that's kind of um, developing from, from there. Okay, um, you might just go back to the PowerPoint for me, Anna, would you, please? Just in the context of self and peer assessment, um, self-assessment in terms of the reflections in both years on the model of professional development in the blog and also at conference attendance, criteria for all assessments, and the feedback they gave was linked onto the criteria. And we were very explicit in terms of um, using the criteria, um, using ideas coming from them, and all the time that self-assess before you hand in an assignment, self-assess against the criteria, um, because that's what we, we mark against. In the context of peer assessment, in the third year when they presented just to their own cohort here on the student presentations where everybody was doing it, they actually voted on which presentations they thought were better, the, the top two. Um, interestingly, they said they would like to have had more time on that. We kind of stuck it in at the end, yeah. didn't do a whole lot on it. Quick choice on loop. Yeah, and they wanted more time on that and a discussion around that. They, so I thought that was interesting. They things that they want, would like to do things like two stars and a wish for their peers. Which, yes. So we, we're yes. going to try and build that in this we're year. Going to, we're going to build it in, yeah. Um, and the other thing in peer assessment is the fourth years on the blog, leading and marking the current um, the current third years. And as I said, the criteria for that was, it came from their own, um, their own work on that. So what we're gonna do is give you a chance for questions or give you a chance to actually look at this in more detail, because it's what we talked about. Um, and the learning outcomes are there. Where's our student um, feedback? It wouldn't one? stay up on the wall. All oh, right, okay. We but might I... try and, because their responses, we'll actually lay it out somewhere flat. I think it'll be worth doing that. Yeah, yeah because their reflections on the assessment um, were really, really positive. One interesting thing about, and the, somebody tweeted this, which I thought was interesting. They said, this was the only module that we were ever asked about our assessment. So, and that was really important to them. Now, the other side of that, and I'm conscious of it this year, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Once you give them voice, you have, to do. you have to do something about it. <laughs> okay. So I'll come back to doing that just when we wind up. So we might just take, or will we leave it at the end, Anna, and just go through here? Sorry, I'm not with Sorry. you. Sorry. Yeah. Will we take a few minutes to look at that, or will we just do I the last we couple do, of slides? Yeah, we, we, I think just do the last couple of okay, slides. Okay, just in can, case, can because it's getting to lunchtime. Yeah. Okay. So um, in terms of our own learning on this, um, by the time it comes to the end, the module is over because it's continuous assessment, so it's all done. So we're not left at the end with lots of marking and everything else to do. In terms of the blog, very painful the first time we did it. Um, but going forward, because the fourth years are monitoring, there's far less um, work for, for us. We've made lots of changes, as I said, depending on their feedback and evaluations. The student voice, we have to be prepared to act. And I think um, I've kind of developed that a little bit more this year in working with the third years. They're just starting out now with our collaboration. They've finished their private blog. They've reflected on the blog as of this Friday. Um, one of the first things I did was I gave them a questionnaire um, drawing on O'Gorman and Drudy's questionnaire that they used in their research. And it's looking, asking them to identify their areas of professional development over the core of these modules to help them to be able to um, meet the needs of all learners in their classroom. So they had to answer, name four areas that they thought they would need, and then there was lists and they had to prioritise, okay? And just like O'Gorman and Rudy's um, research findings, research came out at the bottom, um, strategies came out at the top, methodologies. 
So when I analysed that open question, I made a list of it in terms of what they said. And I've actually, when I'm working with them, I post up the lists. And I, um, what I've tried to do this year is that notion of, you know, the in negotiated integrated curriculum. So I'm kind of looking at their needs against the learning objectives of the curriculum and how I can be very explicit about how they're being met. Because I could just look at those and kind of say, oh, yeah, well, sure, I'm meeting those. I'm touching base on mo most of those and maybe I need to do a bit of this or that. But actually, I put it up and I've given them a checklist of it as well. And one of the things, some of them are like strategies, um, classroom management, um, resources, you know, the usual things. So what I've actually done is given them shared Google Docs and there's five attached to each group every week in the class and they make notes on anything that anybody says in relation to classroom management resources, methodologies. So there's a list at the end of each session and they're adding to it all the time. So at the end of the modules, they're going to have a list of that. And I'm very explicit then in saying, OK, so we're kind of meeting this one on a continuous basis. That's what you're doing in your Google Docs. This is what I'm doing this week. That links with what you said. So again, it's trying to get their engagement and let them feel that their voice is being heard. But as Michael said earlier, what it does is it does slow you down. Yeah. But I am a 100% firm believer in that we need to avoid coverage and think about learning. The, the learning outcomes, making them less if we have to, but equipping them with really good, meaningful skills that will serve them well as they as they move um, forward and um, Don't forget this out of here. And that is aligning what we're doing all the time with the self-study. We're kind of looping that. We extended it to look at, are we, um, is what we're doing enabling them to actually learn how to teach? So not just the curriculum and the content, but is it actually enabling them to learn how to teach? And this year, with the third years, we've extended it a little bit further in terms of how are we enabling to bridge that gap between what they want and what our needs in terms of curriculum objectives. So that's what we're, we're doing with that. So we won't. Yeah, we won't. What we were going to do is to get you to kind of look at um, what we have here. We might put out the student comments yeah. now, Anna, just because mm -hmm. I think they're really worth looking at. And any questions or comments that anybody, anybody has? Cora, have we a mic? I'm very, oh, yep. First of all, I just want to congratulate the whole team. I mean, it's just a fantastic effort and it's inspiring to listen to actually. So well done. Thank um, you. Just thinking, I wish I was one of their students in your, in your classes. It would be just amazing to be part of it. And I did actually follow the Twitter feed okay. and it was fantastic to see what okay. they were. I didn't realize the context of them being at three different conferences. I assumed it was one conference. So okay. it was lovely to hear that. Okay, okay. Um, just my question is about the peer assessment. I'm just curious to know how a one cohort of students took to another cohort of students assessing them yes. and vice versa. And that was something that we just now, in the last week or two, have been able to discuss because the third years are only back in now. Yeah. So we actually raised that with them because inevitably they're saying, oh, school placement was so tough. We have so much to do. And then we had the blog on top of it. They value it. They say that, yes, we wouldn't have looked for collaboration beforehand. And we asked them that very question. How did you feel about your peers marketing you? No, no, it's more the point that they're not their, their same cohort. That's what I'm just curious yes, about. I can understand. somebody that's ahead of them. Yeah, well, yeah. they said that they felt they understood. They walked in their shoes so that they felt that they were, and they felt the comments were very appropriate, didn't they, Anna? But think that we were we are planning for this year to bring the two groups together yes um, at the end of this semester so that they will meet the the, those, the current third years who are going, are to, going be to be marking doing the them. same with the with the next group behind yeah. we so this year's be... second years we bring the third years to the second years in may oh, beforehand, beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. yes it's linked to it's linked to core as um question and it's just it's just a, a, a comment um, as head of department and as someone who was teaching with 
Fiona on the on the final module there, le leadership for for inclusion. I have to say, I was initially very nervous about <laughs> the um, the the fourth years leading and moderating the third year the third year blog, and um, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a leap of faith. It was in risk taking, oh, risk taking, absolutely. Um, on, on that one. But in terms of evidence of the deepening of their, of their, their learning, um, I mean, there was the, the, the depth of insights that the fourth years had on their, their, their feedback to the third years really, really um, amazed me. They were also extremely sensitive in how they, in how they answered their, their, their queries. They, um, they affirmed them, they were really positive. Then they picked up any of the difficulties that they had and uh, in a very gentle manner, they suggested um, you know, recommendations. They linked it back to their own experience when they were, when they were on the placement in, in, uh, in third year. And um, I must say, I was absolutely amazed with, with, with that aspect of it and it was the one aspect that I have to admit that I was nervous of um, going into it, but it, it, to, to me it was, it was one of the most successful um, aspects of it. And I think the other thing, just building on that Joe, was you also had some of the fourth years saying to the third years, that's a great idea, I never thought of that, I'm going out on placement now and I think I'm going to try that strategy. So it, it became a reciprocal, yeah, yeah which was nice and affirming and enhancing for the third years involved. But you're also building a sense of community. You're, you're, you're like beyond their graduation. Absolutely. You're, you're actually talking to, well, really on that point, on the final day of the fourth years, talk about community. They had um, ordered, and this was through Twitter, wasn't it? They had ordered sweatshirts with SIE, hashtag SIE 401 on it. We got them. And we were all up there and they were, talk about a tight-knit group. As you said, Mark, this is a group that's going forward. But for me, that's the essence of collaborative practice. That was the aim of Next it. Next year, when those are graduates and they're out, yeah. think they'll yes. still be following that hashtag. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Build a community of yes. practice. Yeah. Yes, and what we're saying is this year's third years, you can see that some of them don't even know each other. Like the other day, I, I'm trying to get to know the names, so I asked them to say their name before they speak. And I said, oh yes, we've two Kiras. And I could see people kind of going, oh, like they didn't even know. And it's a small group. But because they're 25 or 400, I suppose, they don't know. So I said to Anne, it'll be interesting to see, will we get the same <laughs> tight-knit community at the end of the two years, you know? Um, I love the idea that your, the presentations um, students had to do couldn't be PowerPoint. Um, and it really kind of opened up the idea of them trying different things. Um, um, I've attended an event with, with my students as second year students in, in Trinity College and they do um, this, this drama event regarding the science engineering module and they invite second level students in to be the audience and I just thought your idea of diversity of audiences as well I wondered is it something you could consider um, bringing second year students in it would be hugely beneficial to them as p potential futures future students and um, gets them a chance to look around the campus the college and to come in and and sit and when I've taken groups now in a science context and they've absolutely loved it um, the, the students the third level students they were th second years, finishing up second year, going into third year themselves in college. They had to do a drama presentation about uh, chemistry and they were given topics and it was just unbelievable the stuff that they came up with, the creativity. Um, so just wondering if that might be a yeah, possibility. Yeah, we're open to all awesome. suggestions. <laughs> It was yeah. very interesting that we, we did get a sense at one stage that there were six students, two groups of three who did the presentations. And there was a bit of a murmuring at one stage from some of the others that, mm. well, they've developed this presentation already from third year. So now all they're doing is recycling that with three different audiences. But we teased that out and it was the adaptation. OK, the bones of it were there, but the audiences were very diverse. So adding another layer like that would, yeah. would add a, a, another bit of complexity to that. I got to that, though, because you're giving 
them feedback for that initial presentation and now yes. they're getting time to implement that feedback for another assessment. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, but what was interesting, and it was interesting when the fourth years got their results recently, because we believe in giving them the breakdown of their results. So as they were done, we give them the breakdown and I got the most beautiful email from a student who had come to me and kind of said, well, I think there might be a bit of inequity here in terms of what you're asking us to do and what the others were asked to do. And um, the student in question just said to me, I take back what I said. I'm so delighted with my mark and it was hard work, but it's really worth it. And I thought, nice to get an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know this is being videoed and here comes a blatant grab. Is there any chance we can use this video publicly to support some of the brilliant work that's happening here? We'll have a look from the Weight Watchers Just point of view and we'll decide. Fiona, <laughs> how can you say that? <laughs> any photoshopping? Photoshopping, photoshopping. no problem. <laughs> I'd just li like to, to congratulate all the presenters today on behalf of the Teaching and Learning um, Committee here in, 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 the, in SPD. Um, I, 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 I'm very, I find it very inspiring and uh, very exciting in terms of teaching and learning generally. But um, what strikes me is, is the, uh, the spiral. I mean, there is no way you could get fourth years uh, doing peer assessment just like that it has to be cumulative it, it has to you know one step builds on the other so you know it's a process that goes on over t over time and um, you know well done on engaging getting the students to engage with that over that l long period of time so um, yeah very very exciting and we had the students to, I mean what I found really different uh, and absolutely amazing was the um, the review of the the article which the students presented as one of our teaching and learning seminars, and that was it's so different. But they knew exactly what they were talking. About. What a way to actually get to grips with, you know, a, an article. We find it very difficult to get students to read articles anyway and make some sense of them. But what a way to do it! Uh, and they loved it, mm -hmm. and they certainly knew what they were talking about there. So well done to all. It's very, very exciting. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Conscious of time now. OK, we well, can always follow these things up, up upstairs yeah. anyway, and, and the posters are all here if any of these questions. Yeah, and we'll have lunch upstairs.